clear. I'm not above bribes. <laughs> First thing on the recording. I mean. <laughs> All right. So your favorite genre of game is what? Favorite? Well, I mean, I, I mostly like RPGs. So I'm hoping that this... I'm hoping this uh, this Fallout Four is more RPG than uh, than shootery. Is that is that a nope. people who've played it so far? Has that been your experience? Eh, I'd say it's a, a very good mix of both. Well, that's not going to work out no. so well. That's a no. So are you a Fable kind of fan? Just stuff like that. I mean, I like I like like WoW a lot, but I don't like the. Uh, um, I'm okay with having to, you know, move your guy around in space and stuff of like that, but to actually apply um, real-time aim and stuff like that isn't really of interest to me. I like more of the strategy like of... Well, the bat, like, the bat system takes a lot of that out. Like, yeah, so... He doesn't like real-time strategy. Then what? He doesn't like real-time strategy. Well, we yeah, those are boring. Like, no, it's not. Age of Empires? Five, yeah. Yeah. No, it's not. It's real-time. Well, I mean, it's turn based to an extent. It's just oh, real, real time really? from uh, yeah, yeah, because the other things are happening at the at the same time. But no, I would say the types of games I really like are, are games like WoW, where it's an RPG but more adventure style RPG where you can run around and do quests and and stuff like that. But I like trying different uh, um, MMOs. Yeah. So you know, like I. Well, I think the difference is that. Those games are just using swords instead of guns, and Fallout is using guns instead of swords to do the same thing. Oh, and I'm okay with that as long as, like you're saying, the bat system allows you to. Uh, well, except uh, in WoW, there's not really any aim. You target, you target and, then you and you, cast yeah, something. you just have to be facing. Yeah. So what you need a like you need an aim bot to just go and kill stuff for you while you walk through. It? No, it's not that I need it. I just it doesn't interest me. Like, you know, first-person shooters having to, like, aim the gun and hit, you know, headshots and stuff doesn't really interest me. I'm also not very good at it. I suspect that if I practice, I could get better at it, but I suspect I also wouldn't get great at it. But it's not fun for me. I don't find that interesting. The melee class. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what, in first-person shooters? No, in Fallout more specifically. Oh, there's different classes? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know. Classes, but like the perks you choose will make you into. Kind of looked like there was like a hackery thing, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, th there is like that's th there's like lock picking, and then there's uh, computers and like terminals. You can hack the terminals. And but that's not really how you attack people, though. That's like a secondary skill. Yeah, it's like unlocking doors. And you can like well, upgrade you your strength and just just like beat beat people with pipes and stuff. Yeah, yeah, that'd be okay with me. They actually way upgraded that from like what, New Vegas or three. Okay, so I can like build an army of robots that like that protect me. Yeah. With hacker skills. Yeah, and a dog. If you want a dog. I mean, that sounds more interesting. Dog does tricks too. Like have an army of dogs. Yeah, an army of dogs. Just one dog. Just one dog. Sorry. What's is the? Huh? Yeah, mods. Mods. <laughs> We'll see. I'll have my. Did I? Yeah. No, I didn't really. The Skyrim didn't really. I, I didn't like the um, not online aspect of. I like more online stuff. I mean, Skyrim, I, I liked the game. The game was a cool game, but I, I couldn't just sit there and play for hours on end. So are you Diablo 2 fanboy then? Or I like Diablo 2 until you finish the. Uh, the storyline and it's not of interest. Same thing with Diablo three. Well, I'm not that guy who just comes back and keeps playing. Diablo three, you have to literally do the like, entire thing four times, even more, even to get anywhere. It's like, oh, I gotta beat the game four times to actually beat the game, and then you still have so much more you can do. Like, well, you're saying to beat the game from the perspective of getting the best gear. No, beat the game as in like you achieve on max difficulty. Oh right, but that's I guess to me that wasn't beating the game. Beating the game was finishing the storyline. Yeah. So I did it on, I think the hardest I did on was hard. So isn't there three levels above that? Uh, it was, uh, it's not. Whatever, it's, whatever it was, it was there was normal, one, and like well, hard, now, now there's hell, a and bunch of something else. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So 
I think we figured out that this is where it's breaking, right? And it's because we're passing in the wrong final environment. Okay, we break at final eval expression. So we traced the whole thing last time down to this very uh, part here. Um, let's see. So we created a let. This is yeah. This is where our, our issue was here at the end. So we added this let in here, where we created a resolved var, and the resolved var was evaluating our expression. Uh, let's open up our. Um, If I remember correctly, it was, we were expanding, we didn't actually have the environment that had the things we needed to look up in. That's, oh, weren't we doing it in here? Or do we have it in a, like a text edit or something? Ah, here it is. Okay. So let's go back in here. I'm confident we're going to get this figured out relatively early today. And then we can go on to the new stuff. All right, so that ends that. So if I just run this right now. Oh, that's the expression. So now we want to run that program, the parse version of that. OK, and that's where we get to the false. So. Let's go ahead and get our resolved variable. Just gonna take that off of there for a second. Actually, put that back in. Hold on. This is resolved var, right? Let's just see what resolved var comes out to here. All right, so that guy. Ultimately boil down to lambda list x in. OK, so it comes down to this part right here. So that's the final body that we are trying to uh, evaluate, but we're evaluating it inside of an app expression. So that's this guy right down here. Okay, so this is what's coming out of here. So we're eval expression. Uh, let's just put LCE here. Let's just look at the pieces that we're getting out of this. So here's our app expression. And we have var A, var B from this guy. And then we're applying A and B here. Okay, this is the body. All right, so the body that we're executing right now is this guy right here. So LCE this time through is that dude right there. Okay, and this is the parsed representation of that. All right, so when I did resolved var, I said go ahead and resolve LCE1 in the current environment. So here's that list. LCE0 is the word app expression. LCE1 is this guy. That's the guy I'm resolving. And he should resolve to the lambda associated with him, right? So resolved var, we saw it does come out to that lambda. So there's the lambda. Now, if I change this to 2, it should give me a 5, the resolved var for this guy right here. There's the 5. All right? So we've proven that our environment has been expanded with the correct stuff, all right? And now we uh, um, need to have the pieces to actually evaluate uh, this body. So we have the final, the final piece here. We need to evaluate the body of this guy. So here is our resolved var. That's this guy. Let's do, just for the sake of, all right, so that gives us the lambda. Okay, this is the function we want to execute. But we need to execute this guy in terms of the parameter we're passing it. So this guy takes in two input, or this guy takes in one input. And the input we're passing this guy, if we were to rewrite this, 
what we want to do is we want to look this is effectively what we want to do let me write this in scheme we have a lambda that takes in an x and disp it pumps out an x like that and we want to pass in a 5. This is a scheme app expression. That's what we are evaluating here. All right. So in order to do this, in order to evaluate this guy in a e expanded environment, we have to expand or extend our environment for lambda. We have a function that does that, passing it this parameter list and passing it these guys. Does that make sense? So this list of stuff. Now expand for lambda or extend for lambda, doesn't that guy figure out whether or not uh, it should be resolved or not? Or did we do that external to that? That was our map function, right? That's this guy. All right, so that function goes through and either just keeps the thing if it's a lambda expression or evaluates it if it's not. So this is for the list of values we're going to be passing in. So I could actually steal that here. Okay, and let's write these pieces then. So I'm going to go ahead and we're this will give us our lambda. So now let's just write the code that gives us the... Um, resolved values of LCE2. So we're going to go ahead and map this function. Uh, where's the function? We're going to map that function, the function that takes in a single parameter, and if the car of that guy is the lambda expression, then it just boils down to it. Otherwise, it evaluates the expression in the current environment. And the dude that we're going to evaluate there the dude, we're, the dude we're mapping this across is this guy. List ref LC. Actually, it's going to be, let's see. The cutter gives me everything but the app expression. The cutter gives me everything. But, okay, so this guy right here. So that should give me. this part as a list, okay? There's only gonna be one thing in the list for us this time, but we could potentially have a lambda that takes in an x, y, z, and takes in a five, six, seven as parameters. So we need to get these guys as a list. So I'll evaluate the expression. What expression? Whatever's returned by this map. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. We'll evaluate the expression x in the environment as long as it's not a lambda, and where x is each of these elements in this list. All right, so that's map there. Here is the environment. Let's see, we gotta, I gotta back off here a second. So there's the map. I'm mapping across this list. That gives me that. And then I'm gonna get rid of this env for a second. Let's just make sure this guy gives us what we think it should give us. So for this particular lambda calculus expression, uh, this guy should give us the list containing a five. That is, it is evaluating the var expression five. There's the list five. All right, so he's doing what we want him to do. So this guy, this map here, this boils down to the second parameter that we want to pass into our extend D and V for lambda. This guy takes in a list of, I'm sorry, extend uh, E and V for lambda is this guy. He takes in a list of vars. That's going to be the parameter list from our resolved var, along with the list of vowels, which is that map, along with our current environment. Okay? So this guy right here, and I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna steal this because we're gonna make this a little bit more readable. Um, let's see. 
just cut that out for right now. Oh, can I? Oh, I need to stop this first. What are you upset about? Oh, I actually need to highlight it. Just having it gray doesn't help anything. Okay, get rid of all this. So I'm going to put some. I'm going to put multiple values here in my let. So this guy is the resolved lambda. So let's call this the lambda. So app expressions always have the function and then the parameters for that function. That's what an app expression is, right? So this is the lambda. That ends right here. <coughs> okay, then I'm going to add another element here. So now I'm going to have, uh, let's call it the, the inputs. Okay, the inputs are going to be the result of this guy. All right, so we can prove that that's working. I'm just going to output the inputs here. So again, we should get our list five out of that. So there's our list five. So exact same code we had before, we're just putting it in something that's going to be a little bit less confusing. I'm having a LED environment here that's defining two different variables. The first one is called the lambda. If I print that out, that's going to be our, it's going to be this guy. All right. The second one is going to be the inputs, which was the list of things I want to extend our environment with. And how am I extending our environment? I want this piece from the lambda. So that is list ref one. That makes sense? So what am I actually doing here? I am actually going to call eval, is it expr? Nope, just exp. Eval expression, what expression am I evaluating? I'm evaluating the lambda in an environment. And what environment am I evaluating it in? I'm environing, I'm evaluating it in the environment extended. So extend env for lambda, which takes in two things. First, it's the list, so it takes in three things. The list of parameters, so that is this guy right here. So that's list ref of the lambda one. Okay, so this guy's going to take in a couple of parameters. So that's list ref, the lambda one. That will give me this piece right here. I'm giving it, what else am I giving it? I'm giving it the inputs. And I'm giving it the current environment that we're extending. Okay, so the very last thing that we're going to do is we're going to evaluate this expression in the environment extended with this list of variable names and this list of values corresponding to it, which we just saw as the list five. Okay, so we'll have a new more local environment that has x equal to five in it. And we're going to evaluate this lambda in there which will ultimately evaluate the body of that guy, which is a var expression, correct? All right, now here's the issue. Since this guy is a lambda and we know it's a lambda, what happens if I call, if I, if I actually call a val expression on this guy? It's gonna come up here, it's gonna go to the lambda, and what does this guy say to do? It says call eval expression on the body right? Given the current environment, I'm giving him the extended environment. Okay. So if we run this, the thing that takes in X and ultimately spits out X, this should just give us the flat number five. Finally works. Oh my God.
<laughs> okay. So now this should allow us. Um, well, first of all, obviously this is still you know a lot of stuff, but it made it a lot easier for us to work with by actually leveraging this let here. This gave us two variable names that we were able to print out and see, okay, well, this guy, the lambda is this. The inputs is this. Now we can use those individual pieces rather than having all this crap strewn, strewn together. I mean, if we just look at this one piece right here, it still looks like parenthesis diarrhea. But compartmentalized, we see that after that part that's highlighted, we're left with two individual variables that have values that are much easier for us to work with. So kind of the power of a let there. All right, so now something we can kind of do with this is we could say, and let's see, uh, at this point we're bumping up against some of the limitations of our, uh, our language here. So now we're gonna have, um, let's see. Well, we really do have limitations in our language right now. Because what we'd like to do to kind of test this further is we would like to have something like this, where instead of just regurgitating out the X, which is what we can do right now, apply some sort of operation to this. So maybe we have times X2, something like that, where in this case we should get a 10, right? All right, so that would be great, but we now have to add an additional ability to our language. At this point, we have a language that allows us to resolve variables, extend variable environments, and ultimately reproduce those values. So what did we do here? This, if we look at this lambda expression, here's a function that takes two parameters. And what does that function do? It applies the first parameter to the second one. This is an app expression. All right. Well, where did these two parameters come from? It came from right here. Could I have taken three parameters here? Sure. No problem. And we can say ABC here. And then in here, we can say X, Y. And maybe, let's see, how, how can we, here, we can, we can spit out Y here just to prove this still works. So we'll pass it a six. Uh, and I'm still lying, hold on. That's that guy. That's that guy, that's that guy. Okay, so now we've made our thing a little more complex, proving we can have more than one parameter here. So now we have a lambda that takes A, B, and C. And what does it do? It applies A to the inputs B, C. A is gonna be this guy. B is gonna be this guy. C is going to be that guy. When we ultimately have the app expression right here that takes two parameters x, y, we'll extend it where five is x, six is y, and we're gonna print out the six. Okay, so we can go ahead and run this, and this gives us the six. If I instead say print out the x, this will print out the five. That makes sense? Proving that we can now take in more than one parameter. Okay, so, this is now at the point where our, our language is now limited. We'd like to be able to do something utilizing both X and Y. So it would be awesome if we can do something like this, plus X, Y, and have this ultimately give us an 11, that we've done something with our values, right? Right now we're shoving them into the variable environment, we're pulling them out of the variable environment, we're proving it all works, it doesn't matter which of the values we do, but we can't actually do crap to them. Um, well, no, because our interpreter doesn't know how to do this. Our interpreter doesn't know how to deal with a, a, a plus sign. Make sense? Yeah, we're going to have to teach it. Scheme is perfectly happy with this. But, in, but unfortunately, our parser doesn't know what the heck to do with it. Because we're gonna we're sending this string, you know, this, this list based thing, into our parser, and he's gonna say, "Rut row, <laughs> what's a plus sign, and what am I supposed to do with that?" Right? Okay. Right now, what will our parser? How will our parser treat a plus sign? 
Won't it just be a symbol? It's just like a variable name, right? Okay, but we really want a plus sign to be treated differently. All right, so we're gonna back up here for a second. And we're gonna go back to just parse exp and exp like this. All right, and we see what do we get out of this for our plus sign? Okay, right here. Yep, we get a var expression for our plus sign. Um, when really, this guy should probably be a new kind of animal. Maybe a math expression. Fair enough. Or maybe an op. That's probably better, an op expression. Okay, let's, let's, let's make that happen. So instead of a plus sign being treated as a plain Jane var, we're going to treat it as something built into the language, kind of key words, right? So in the languages we're familiar with, Java or whatever, C Sharp, uh, we can't create variable names that match built-in things. Like you can't create your own variable name called this. You can't create your own variable name named string with a capital S in Java. Already built into the language, already exists, seats taken. Make sense? So we're going to reserve a couple more keywords here, namely the, the generic math operators, plus, minus, times, divide. And we want those guys to be treated as, you know, an op expression. Let's call them op expressions right now. And we apply operators to two operands in our little world right now, our math world. Okay, so we got to go back up to parse. All right, so here's parse expression. So right now we're looking for numbers, we're looking for symbols, and what do we do with the symbol? We just immediately assume it's a var expression. Where now we need to do something a little bit more here rather than just assuming it's a var expression. Okay, so if we're looking at a symbol, we want to pass it through our known symbols first. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and create a, a predicate. What's a predicate again? Single function, a function that takes usually a single parameter that boils down to true or false, but it doesn't necessarily have to take a single parameter. But usually it's what predicates are for because we apply them through like a map or something. But your definition is perfectly acceptable. Uh, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a predicate. Um, and this guy is going to be called uh, just op, like this. All right. And op is going to be a lambda. Now let's actually, we need to start commenting these things a little bit. So what's op going to do? This guy's going to return true if the given symbol is a reserved op and false otherwise. Okay? So op is going to be a lambda that takes in a symbol. And then we're going to have a uh, um, some way of detecting if it's one of our known symbols. And we'll build it into op for right now, but certainly as our language gets build bigger, we might want to have other helper functions that kind of have a list of all of our operators. So let's look at this. So we'll say uh, this guy takes in that. We'll say cond. Let's see. To find out if something is an op, it would be handy to have a list of operators. Correct? Okay. So what would a list of operators look like? Let's just start with, uh, we'll just make the list here real quick. So we're going to have a list and our operators are plus, minus, so do we need, let's see, let's see, plus, minus, times divide huh uh, because I'm in the wrong language mode right now there we go so those guys uh, it'll probably actually create a list of let me actually test something here I'm gonna steal this guy real quick get this out of there let's just run this make sure nothing breaks okay I want to try to do that. Okay, so it's uh, trying to... A apostrophe before it, then it'll treat everything as a case. 
Okay, there we go. So we can create a list containing our ops. Now we need to check to see if the symbol we're going to be given is in this list. Okay, so we need to write a function that finds out if something is contained in this list. All right, so right before our op thing here, in fact, maybe we even do it at the very top. Let's define, um, yeah, I like that, list of ops. Well, it's called operators, list of operators, yeah, whatever. Okay, and right now this guy's gonna be plus, minus, times, divide. So that's just gonna be kind of a global variable that will utilize uh, in here. Then our predicate is going to check to see if a value is in this list of ops. So let's just create some uh, generic helper functions. All right, so we're gonna need to do something maybe called contains that returns true if a, a value you're looking for is in the list of ops, is in a list, false otherwise. Okay, so let's define contains to be a lambda that takes in a, um, let's call it a val and a list, and it returns true if val is found in list. Make sense? So what are we gonna do? We're gonna say if null LST return false, else, here we'll kick it down a line, else if, I'm gonna do this as a cond, here. Make that a false. If I'm still kicking, then I want to look at the car. Is car LST equal to val? If it is, turn true. Else, call contains, passing it val and the coder of LST. All right, so this guy, let's put a little comment here, returns true if val is found in LST. That's what this guy is going to be for. Little helper function that we're going to be able to use here in a second. And using a little foreshadowing, we might find that helpful for other things in the future. Now our language is starting to become a little bit real. Okay, so now we can come down here. And here, let's let's add some more uh, comments in here. Um, functions related to the environment, variable environment. Okay, so that's all those guys, and then these guys are constructors related to our lambda calculus expression types. Okay. Um, would you say that that op thing should probably be up here in uh, generic helpers? I don't know how generic that guy is, but well, we'll find a place for him in a second. Let's finish doing this. Okay, so there's our constructors. Um, these are functions. Let's call this core core parser functions. So that's our parse exp. Um, actually, um, no, that's right. Core parser functions. So that's parse, unparse, which we never actually use, right? Is unparse actually part of our interpreter? To reverse parse, right? 
Okay, so really we don't actually need this guy anymore. Do you want to keep him? You just don't want to lose this, do you? It's under the hood stuff. <laughs> Well, okay, so if it's under the hood stuff, then we just opened up the hood of our car, and there's this, like, glowing thing over in the corner. It just looks really expensive. <laughs> it's like, well, what is that? It's kind of like the appendix. <laughs> Christian worldview? Maybe? Yeah, let's count it. Um, yeah, it's like the appendix. You don't need an appendix, right? No. Isn't that true? Yeah. Actually, isn't that kind of an interesting... I wonder what Dr. Lockley would have to say about that. Isn't that actually an interesting support for anti-evolution? Yeah, I mean, if we don't have, if we, if we have an appendix, and we don't need an appendix, why hasn't it evolved out of us? For what? It may have been used. It may have been used. <laughs> something that might rupture. <laughs> it may have been used five thousand years ago, and it hasn't evolved out of us. Mm. I think I read an article saying that it used to be that scientists thought it used to be for when we ate more raw meat. And it made something to I see. So, so the argument is is that I couldn't necessarily use that as an anti-evolution argument at this you point because we we have to wait. Pro-evolution. You could use it. It's how you interpret. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Has natural selection removed it? Uh, is it in the process of evolving it out, or is it actually evidence that evolution because isn't a thing? The other side of it. If it has no use, why would God put it in us? In the first place, but yeah. It has a use. It holds a bunch of rupturing the, thing. Yeah, like the people that ruptures. Yeah, it ruptures. It's the use. What's, what's so the use? It's the use. It holds the bacteria that the you guys have. Okay. It's like a little don't like, have it. backup pocket of Survival your gut medicine. bacteria. Okay. Oh. So if the rest of all the gut bacteria gets killed, it can repopulate from your bacteria. Ah, gotcha. So it, it's it, basically a backup. Right? It's a backup vat of chemicals for your stomach. Yeah. In the, the, the event that. Okay. So we don't need it, but it's still nice to have, as you right. pointed out. Okay. Well, so then maybe that is why God gave it to us, is the backup. But it can also kill you. So if God put a little time bomb, like 50-50, <laughs> might help, yeah. but yeah. you could die. Have you seen that movie, uh, what is it, is it called, um, is it In Time or something? Yeah, uh, Justin, Justin, Timberlake. Justin Timberlake, where, have you seen it? Oh, yeah. It's actually a really good movie. Yeah. It's very interesting. Know, Forget about who's in it for a second. Yeah, so I, the, the idea is, is what if, what if the... Um, the currency in the world was time. And every person out there, you know, I don't remember what the, it's not on a certain birthday, but it's around a certain age. All of a sudden their clock, yeah, their clock starts ticking, but they don't age from that point forward. But their clock starts ticking down. All right. And as soon as their clock hits zero, they die. Okay? But they never age. They're always at the age of 25 in terms of physical. But you buy coffee with time. You, you know, you pay your bills with time. You, when you work a job, you earn time. Okay, so like the rich people, you know, they they're given like you know a million, uh, you know, a million years or something like that to their or thousand years. To their kids is like a graduation present, you know, because now the well, kid could just not do anything and still have you know plenty of time. It's it's a really fascinating type movie. Um, yeah, I don't know. I was what got me thinking about that. Are they get, where are they getting all the time from? The appendix. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, like, it's in the appendix. Like, it was a genetically modified. What was the plot based around though? Like it's the set or who was it? He he was given time from somebody who was like really. really oh yeah, yeah. Some super old guy. Well, well, super super. A guy who's been around for a really long time and has accumulated a lot of time, and the guy decided he want, didn't want to live anymore. So, and the way you give time to somebody else is you do this like weird handshake thing. And then time flows between two. And uh, the guy, I don't know, knocked out Justin Timberlake or something, just gave him a thousand years or something like that. And then the guy basically sat and watched the sunrise and time expired for him because he gave all his time away. So now what would a person who's living paycheck to paycheck do if they had all the time they might ever need? Well, it wasn't just that because he was in a zone where if he had that much time in that zone, he had to like throw everything off. And, like, yeah, there was a whole caste system. And so, like, yeah. these timekeepers 
come and like kind of take all this time mm -hmm. thinking he stole it. Yeah. I mean, it was actually kind of a cool sci-fi type movie. Worth seeing. Definitely didn't suck. All right, so you decide you want to keep on parse? Fine. We'll keep it. Fine. Fine. No, no, no. Don't actually use this. All right. It looks cool. All right, but we are definitely getting rid of our extend ENV for lambdas, which are definitely required. We need those functions I just deleted. They are absolutely vital. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to put those back up here with our variable environment where they probably belong, right? We're just organizing stuff a little bit so that we're kind of good to go for our next homework assignments that are coming up. Um, okay. And so this is our parser stuff, core parser stuff, parse, unparse, uh, eval expression, and uh, run program. Okay. Uh, then let's make sure that we didn't just break anything. I think we should be good. So this should currently give us a, oh, this is going to currently kill us. So let's switch this back and have it give us an X. That should give us a five, right? There's our five. And if we have it give us a Y, we should get our six. Okay. Now, we're getting ready to write some stuff. Um, let's put the is op thing inside of our parser. Um, let's see, core parser functions. Um, Maybe call it parser helper functions, where we'd have it that we'd have the op uh, predicate. So define op to be a lambda that takes in a symbol. Just taking in, taking an S. And what we're going to do is we're going to return true if S is in our list of operators, uh, operators, which is up here. So we have a, uh, here's, let's call these global variables. All right. So we have our list of operators. I'm going to steal that name here real quick. And then we have a function called contains. We can pass it a value in a list. So we'll just go ahead and return contains S and list of operators. So op, this guy, returns true if S is an operator and false otherwise. Make sense? All right, so that's the op guy. So now, in parse, when we have something that's a symbol, we can't just you know haphazardly assume it's a var. Now we only want it to be a var if it's not an op. Otherwise, we want to make it an op expression. Make sense? So let's steal this real quick. So now we're going to ask the question. We'll say if op LC expression, if that's true, then what are we going to return? We're going to return op expression. Else, we're going to return var expression. Like that. That makes sense? And right there, unparse, now it's broken, so we're going to kill it. I'm going to try to kill it. So rather than upgrade unparse, which we don't need, we're just going to delete it. And that's, you, that's on you. No, we're not upgrading it. Why would we waste our time upgrading something we don't use? Hmm. 
and there's so much more difficult stuff we could be adding. Okay, so now, did I just get another demon picture? Demon picture? Didn't, wasn't he the one that did the Satan or the demon picture first day of class? I like that. It was sweet. <laughs> it, was thought, it was thoughtful. Oh, by the way, I, if you notice, I am alive from the motor test. Yeah, it worked great. Yeah, it worked great until... Yeah, so... <laughs> went all up and down the river, 30 minutes, no problem. Went to, Only got up to about 30 miles an hour, though. Only a couple miles an hour faster. It was me and Caruso in the boat, so... Uh, I think it's probably two or three miles an hour faster than the other one. I would have thought it would translate faster than that, but well, it didn't. Um, maybe it was because it was the first time I ran it and it was cold out or something. But uh, ran great, but when I got... So we decided to fish all the way down by the, the dam. So we had gone underneath Highland and came all the way back and went all the way down by the dam. And uh, when I got to where we were going to fish, it was already getting dark, so I was like in a rush. So I turned the engine off after having an open throttle for like basically 20 minutes straight. And the motor was flooded, <laughs> so it, it, I didn't let it burn off the fuel that was in there, so I couldn't restart. Um, <laughs> so we came back in on the trolling motor in pitch blackness. <laughs> but it ran great, uh, so now I just have to calm myself, because I was so excited it was working. <laughs> like, like, I wanted to make it go faster, so I was actually like, stepping on the throttle with my foot, trying to just get it down just a little, little bit. <laughs> And Caruso's like screaming because it's like really cold out. And I, I had gloves and stuff on. He didn't realize we were going to be driving in cold wind for 30 minutes straight. Okay, And I'm like banking it hard, like in really tight, tight circles, trying to like turn around and stuff without slowing down. And he thought that was problematic. He cried a little. At first I thought he was kidding. He wasn't. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. What was I doing? Oh, yeah, that's right. So, symbol. If this guy, so whenever we see a symbol, rather than just immediately assuming it's a var, we're going to check to see if it's actually an op. Okay? So, if it's an op, we'll return op expression. If it's a var, we'll turn var expression. So, let's test this. So, we're just going to be parsing for right now, because I'll give you guys an assignment, the hard part. Um... All right, so now, this should be x, y here, right? So now it should parse this. It parsed it before, but it treated the plus as a var expression. Now it should treat it as an op expression. So let's go ahead and see if it does. And there's our op expression. Make sense? All right, so now, app expressions are a little bit more complex than they used to be. App expressions, we cannot just immediately assume that the first parameter of an app expression is a lambda. It could actually be a op expression. Correct? All right, so we have a new kind of animal here. So what I'm going to do is we're going to add a define eval op expression, okay? And this guy is going to take in a lambda calculus expression and the environment in which it's being uh, evaluated. Uh, okay, I need to write some other words here, All right? Lambda, lambda calculus expression, and an env. Okay, now the reality is, if I'm evaluating an op expression, what specific kind of lambda calculus expression is this guy? He's an app expression, right? So it would probably be maybe uh, um, prudent for us to go ahead and call it an app expression there, just as a reminder. Make sense? Okay, so we will only call eval op expression under the circumstance that we're actually evaluating an op expression. Similarly, we might call eval lambda expression under the circumstance that we have a lambda expression. So we could move a lot of this crap that we have down here into uh, the lambda expression thing, right? 
We could do that. We won't do that right now, but we could. So we'll say eval op expression. And what do we do for an op expression? Well, we know that the car of app expression will be a op expression, right? But specifically, this guy, let's, so I'm just going to actually do this. Let's just uh, return app expression for right now. Let's get it placed in the right, right place, okay? So here's our eval op expression, and, uh, you know, we can put a little comment in here. This evaluates an app expression whose car is an operator. Make sense? All right, so we're all the way down here in our lambda, uh, in our app expression, rather. So this is what happens if we're in an app expression, this stuff right here. So if the first element of this guy is a lambda, the first real element is a lambda, then we're going to do all of this crap. Right. Let's see if that's true. Where's the end of that guy? Yeah, right there. So if it's if the first element is a lambda, we're gonna do that. Otherwise, we're gonna do this. And what's this say? This says it must be an app expression, right? Um, let me think about this. What's an example of something that would get into this first part but not the second part? This is the true statement. This is the false statement that we have right now. We probably can move these into cons. So this is saying if list ref LCE1, which gets us past the first element of the app, uh, the app statement. If this guy is actually a lambda expression, then we'll go ahead and evaluate that expression. When would he not be a lambda? Oh, 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 he wouldn't be a lambda in this case. If we have uh, something that looks like this. That's an app expression whose first real element is actually a var expression, right? So let's remind ourselves of that so we don't have to figure that out again. So this says, is the, let's see, first element, let's see, how do we, do we just put a blank line in there? First element of app expression is a lambda. This guy says first element of app expression is a var expression, right? And we just have it as an else. We probably want to do these as cons now, since we now have multiple things. And let's just make sure this still runs. What's up? Really? Well, but then I can just give that to you as your homework assignment. I mean, at this point, this is easy stuff now, right? <laughs> I. I think it probably looks more complex than it actually is. Wouldn't you agree? And you're my you're my baseline for Joe Average. What do you think? <laughs> See, you didn't even get I was insulting him. <laughs> you're, you're my baseline for Joe Average. Uh, by the way, Pebbles, you are not. <laughs> Just want to clarify. He's severely above it. Pebbles is my baseline for as long as he's confused. Actually, it goes the other way. If at some point in time he becomes not confused, 
I need to really pick up the pace. (laughs) 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 Things need to go go north quick. So I thank you for that, by the way. Are you even paying attention in class? Are you eat? <laughs> what are you what are you doing back there? You have your phones in. What's going on back there? Oh, I don't like the one with your like this All right. All right. So while you're listen while you're sitting in one of my live lectures, you are actually watching a recorded lecture from me for another class. Right. What class? 350? No, like 470. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about, so he's going back to day one trying to feel <laughs> See, Man, this is amazing. <laughs> okay, so you're in 470 right now during a live lecture watching a previously recorded lecture of 470 delivered by me. It is like Inception. Is this a different, oh, is this a different year? Is this a different <laughs> See, now what he has to do is in a future class, he has to watch this class where we discuss him watching this class. <laughs> <laughs> I am kind of curious now if it's this year's class or if it's a different year class. Which, which class? Which lecture? Last lecture? Like three weeks ago? Like three classes. It's like when we went over the midterm. No, before that. Like Are you getting a lot out of it? Uh, here and there. So you're watching the class in class, but you're not even attending either of the classes <laughs> that you're watching. <laughs> it's like the, have you seen the movie 13th Floor? Nobody here has seen 13th Floor? It's another interesting sci-fi type thing. It's, uh, um, it's so the, these folks uh, uh, perfect kind of virtual reality. So you go, you know, they created this thing where you, you know, put this head thing on and you basically, it puts your, uses your brain waves and puts you into a virtual world. But the virtual world is like the real world. So it, let's call it perfect virtual reality. So, you know, you can, you can, you know, pretend like you're a cowboy or something like that, whatever. Well, but what ends up happening is the virtual world creates a virtual reality world. So then you start questioning what's real. So the real world, huh? So it's Inception, but not sleeping? It sounds almost exactly like Total Recall. Might be a different storyline, but the same concept. Total. Total Recall. Total well, recall. Total Recall. They just reprogrammed his brain. I mean, they they. But he went. He went in to do the memory thing, where they insert the memory of you doing something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you always know you're in real life. Yeah. You don't know what. No, no, no. Your that's life the concept was. is that you don't know the difference. Is that what you're doing? Oh, you're that's true. No, no, you're right. You're right. It, so he's talking about it wasn't what the sh- the movie was about, but what he went in for yeah. was basically yeah. a virtual vacation. Yes. Where it was as if he went on the trip, but yeah. So it's that. Where he goes in a place, and he, I mean, it was real life to, to these people. But then they're inside, and they realize that in the virtual reality, they've come up with virtual reality. So then they start questioning, was the real, was what they thought was real actually real, or were they somebody else's virtual reality? It's, it's kind of interesting. Worth watching. Um, okay. <laughs> I'm just giving you all the, this gold. I mean, would you have ever watched a Justin Timberlake movie otherwise? It's because you're a fanboy. Well, that's Dave. <laughs> <laughs> In a nutshell. Like, go ahead and I actually like I like Justin Timberlake. Plus, he's a good golfer. So, why do is people? He, what? Is he still in that space? That was in the social network. That was in a movie. Oh, okay. I felt like he actually bought MySpace. Oh, I, I, I guess that's possible. Actually, yeah. yeah, it's possible. It's more of like a hobby. Like nobody uses it anyway, so why not buy it? It was in 2011 he bought it. He's a co-owner. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Put $35 million into it. Um, okay, so this guy. So we're going to, uh, so 
This guy says, if we're looking at a lambda expression, do this stuff. If we're looking at a var expression for the first element of the app expression, do this stuff. But now we have a middleman in there, right? We need to see, are we looking at a op expression? All right, because right now it's just a one or the other. If it's not a lambda, it must be a var. So that's why we have to convert this into a cond. All right, so let's convert it to a cond as is first. Then we'll add the, <laughs> so let's, so we don't break it too much. So here's the first part of our cond. Is anybody else terrified? <laughs> All right, so there's that. This is what we do as a result of that. All right, and that guy's done. All right, then we'll go ahead and put an else in there. And for our else, let's do all of that stuff. What's up? The stuff that used to belong to the bar expression. All right. So right now we have a cond that has two productions. That's if it's a lambda expression. This is basically if it's a var expression. All right, so let's make sure nothing broke here. Okay, so there's that guy. I'm going to go ahead and run our program one last time. And we let's just get an X in here. So we should get a 5 out of this, and then we should get a 6 out of this. All right, we're good. Okay, so let's go back in and put our x, y in here. Okay, and then we'll go back to our parse expression. All right. So this guy should still be parsing. We still get our op expression here. Okay. So now, let's put in our second cond. EQ, really, let's just steal this line right here. We're looking at an op expression. First element of app expression is a op expression. What should we do with an op expression? What's an op expression going to look like? In our world right now, we could probably assume that op expressions have exactly two parameters. Since we're only supporting mathematical op expressions, we can say plus is always applied to two parameters. Minus always applied to two parameters, so on and so forth, right? All right, so if we have a op expression, so that's something that's gonna look like something like that. But the reality is, is this is going to be um, an example of an op expression Yeah, it's going to look like something like this. We, we, we want to apply the plus to whatever this guy evaluates to and whatever this guy evaluates to. That makes sense? So we're applying a plus to both of those. So for your homework, you should make our code work. That is... This line right here should ultimately produce an 11 for that line. All right. All the operators. But if you can get it working for one, you can get it working for all of them. So it's, uh, I mean, here, the, the hint, uh, probably call, uh, what do we even, do we start writing it? Yeah, here, we started writing it. <laughs> 
probably call eval op expression. <laughs> and this guy knows how to apply plus signs to, to, other, to the next two dudes and so on and so forth. Okay? So let's go ahead and make sure we have this in our last few minutes. Let's make sure we have this up on GitHub correctly. Huh? Did I never post it before? I thought I put it on GitHub, didn't I? Okay. GitHub is good though. GitHub is good. Slack and one time we paste in. Oh, we'll find out. First of all, I need to find out where that guy lives. <laughs> Save definition as. All right. Well, okay. I have it in the. Why? Well, but we need to start tracking this for different versions of our interpreter. <laughs> All right. What so are we gonna? I see you have version control experience. What? Yeah, I use pastebin. <laughs> so what? What are we gonna call our language here? Amish. <laughs> the Amish programming language. I like it. Yeah. Be called Barnes. <laughs> be called Barnes? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Barnes. All right. So this is the Amish programming language. <laughs> yeah, All right, so. <laughs> Can we rename scope the bar? No, no, rename, rename environments the bar. No, All right. So what's scope? Stalls. Scope can be stalls, yeah. All right, so let's go ahead and let's get. Now farmers can do corner. CD there. Okay. This is fall 2015. <laughs> this is actually going to be kind of funny. Um, let's see. Where is this thing stored? Just go and rack it and then save as. I did! Where you want it. I, I did. <laughs> That's why this is so sad. It's <laughs> same definition as. Okay, it's in 470. Oh, oh, inside of fall 2013. That makes sense. <laughs> Let's just roll with it. <laughs> it makes perfect sense. 50% of the time, it works every time. All right, so fall 2013, CSE 470. There it is. Okay. All right, so we'll go ahead and do this, and we're going to do a git init. All right, then we'll do a git add star git commit dash m initial commit. Oh, you get the these old ones too. I don't want that to happen. Yeah, that was the old language. All right, hold on. We, we got we to gotta fix this. That's what I'm doing. File, new folder, <coughs> fall 2015. What's up? What? Oh, yeah, I get it. Alexa's iPhone. All right, so save as... Mm -mm. No clue. All right, now it's in there. CD here to this guy. Get init. Get add star. Get commit dash. M initial commit. Let's go to this guy, this guy, new repository, Amish programming language. All right, then we need this. 
All right, we need to harvest this lambda. All right, run program, pray program. Pray, pray, pray program. All right, so now it should be up here. All right, so there's this guy. I'll go ahead and put the assignment up. All right, so the assignment is to get app expressions working for op expressions. Make sense? So get app expressions working for op expressions. Finally, we're able to do another assignment. Aren't you excited? I guess nobody's excited. Well, you're super excited. Don't lie to me. I know that face. That's what you have to do. Hi. Hi. That's actually probably true. Yeah. Probably gonna work on it next class. Yeah. Oh yeah. I gotta go hit the golf course. Yeah. Is it even like light out still? Ish. It was like super foggy and hazy. Hey. Had, uh, acts of desperation call for... <laughs> call for what? More acts of desperation? Well, I mean, when it's... I would think you want to use your 